I'm going to do a quick example on how to find the Fourier series of a simple function. As you know, these are the formulas you probably have memorized. This is the format that your solution is always going to be in. Um, a naught, a sub n, and b sub n. You know you find those using these formulas right here. I'm going to use the function x over the period negative pi to pi. Um, the first step you want to do is check if it's on a periodic interval, um, like from negative p to p. If the function isn't on a periodic interval, if it's from zero to some number, let's say, um, you can't find the Fourier series this way, and you have to use a different method. You'd have to do the cosine, sine, or full Fourier expansion, which you'll probably learn next, because it's like what they do right after. So. You always want to check to make sure that you're doing the right method. Um, in this case, yes, it is periodic, so we're going to do it the original way, the first method, whatever. So step two is to check if the function is even or odd. Um, this is super important because if the function is even, b sub n is going to be zero. If the function is odd, a naught and a sub n are going to be zero. Um, it really takes a lot of the work out of it if you have these memorized. Um, and the reason it is that way is because if you ever have an odd function and you integrate it, you'll end up with an even function. And if you ever have an even function and you're plugging in values that are the same value except one's negative, whatever, like this, you know that um, a negative input into an even function will give you a positive output. And if you're using the same input and one is negative, you're going to end up with what? f of x minus f of negative x, but you know f of negative x is just f of x for an even function. So you end up with just zero. And so that is why these are true. That's basically why this part right here is true, that a sub naught is zero. But trust me, the same exact um, principle here is why these are true. So memorizing that makes it a lot easier to just recognize whether or not the function is even odd or neither and do this. <clears throat> so our function is odd, so we can use this right here. We know that a naught and a sub n are zero. The next step is just to remember our little formula for b sub n and calculate that. b sub n is that. So you take your little b sub n formula and plug everything into it. You have your function sine of n pi x over p, where our p is pi. It's from negative p to p, and there's a 1 over p on the outside, just like the formula. Um, since we have pi as our p, we can cancel those, and you end up with this, which is easier, obviously. And then... Um, if you look at this function, you will notice it is an odd function, sine of x times an odd function, which is the same as having an even function, because if you plug in a negative input, you will always get a positive output, because x will always give you a negative output, and then sine will always give you a negative output, and negative times a negative will give you a positive. And because it's even, you can change your inter interval from negative pi to pi from to just 0 to pi with putting a 2 on the outside. Yeah. Then after you have this, you just integrate normally. I did this weird parts method. And then I had this. Then you want to look at your terms. This term sign right here, um, if you look and you plug in a pi into this, it's going to be n pi, sine of n pi is going to be, for any integer n, 0. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, sine of any of those pi's is 0. And then your other thing that you're plugging in is 0. So you just know this whole thing, this term is insignificant. It's going to be 0 no matter what for these inputs. And then you look at your other term, cosine. You know that when you plug in 0, it's going to be 0 because that x right there <clears throat> and then you know that cosine of n pi, think about cosine of n pi for any integer n. Cosine of pi 
is negative 1. Cosine of 2 pi is 1. Cosine of 3 pi is negative 1. So it just kind of goes back and forth between negative 1 and positive 1 depending on what n is. So that's why you turn it into this negative 1 to the n. And then that pi is just from the x. And then um, because this negative is out here, you can just multiply these together and get, you know, negative 1 to the n plus 1. And um, bring in your 2 and your over pi to cancel that pi, whatever. Oh. So you can cancel those pi's and here's your b sub n. Remember your original format of what your solution will always look like. You know, these two are zero, these two are zero. b sub n, you just found it. So plug that guy in and you end up with this. Sorry about that weird zero thing. That was a mistake. Um, and there you go.